Hi, I'm Matt here in Michigan. And I'm Randall here in Texas. Today, Matt and I are taking a look at a viewer-recommended film, the 2002 Below. This movie stars Bruce Greenwood, Matthew Davis, Olivia Williams, and Zach Galifianakis. It is directed by David Twally, who also directed Pitch Black, The Chronicles of Riddick, and Riddick, but you might know him a little bit more from his writing credentials, which include The Fugitive and G.I. Jane. Now in Below, the crew of a U.S. submarine during World War II rescued three members of a British medical ship that went down when strange events start happening on the sub. Now before we go any further, if you like this review, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe to see more of our videos and get notifications on when they come out. Below had a $40 million budget but earned just a little bit more than half a million dollars at the box office. This movie received mixed reviews from critics and below average reviews from audiences. Randall, you know I'm not much of a thriller <laughs> slash horror buff. Um, you're a little bit more than I am, so I'll let you have the uh, the first go on this one. What did you think of Below? If you're not a horror slash thriller buff, you don't have to worry because this movie is not horror or thriller. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure I can pinpoint exactly why we were recommended this by a viewer. It was filmed on location in Lake Michigan using a World War II submarine for the exterior shots, the USS Silver Sides. So, like, from that perspective, it's got a cool Michigan uh, background and story, which at, at least that's interesting. But I found the movie itself extremely lackluster. To me, this movie does kind of date itself as like an early 2000s movies with not just kind of like the special effects, but all the way of how it's like played out and stuff. It looks similar to some other like early 2000 movies that we've seen. But yeah, I agree with you. I mean, nowadays watching this movie, this is something I would expect on like sci-fi or, or maybe the, the thriller station or something like that. Not something I would expect to see in the theaters. I was shocked when I looked up the critical response to this and found that it was so mixed, even maybe leaning towards positive. But I'm like, what What movie did you guys watch? Was it a different one? Am I watching The Wrong Below? I really just found everything about it pretty lackluster. I didn't like the characters. I thought that they kind of misused their CGI a little bit. Really, the whole basis of a submarine film is that you should feel a little claustrophobic. You should feel like it's really cramped. And that might make for a good ghost story. But in this, I'm like, wow, there's all this space for activities. It just all in all wasn't well done. We could have done a lot more of that. Like you say, those kind of like thriller elements like you, we could have had what you mentioned, you know, like that claustrophobia or whatever, but or the time period, like World War Two, we could have had more of that, like, oh my goodness, you know, we're, we're going to get, you know, destroyed by another ship. And we do have some elements in there, but I don't think it was really ratcheted up, you know, enough to really drive home that tension. So it's kind of like, all right, well, are we going to take more of this, like, ghost ship angle, which I don't know that, you know, the scares for us were really all that, scary or we could have taken the suspense you know world war ii element and i don't think we really hit either one all that well yeah they spend way too much time like half the film almost with this whole being chased by a german submarine killer and those scenes aren't extremely well done and it just gets in the way of the ghost story pick a lane when you're trying to tell this movie basically you could make a pretty good horror film based on a sub i think i i don't think that that's in question i just don't think that you're trying to make a world war ii thriller you're trying to make a ghost thriller but i'll tell you you, you brought up a good point in 2002 another movie came out by the title of ghost ship and it is way better it knows what it's doing it's kind of a little bit corny and schlocky but it knows it's a little corny and schlocky when you have like critics given some these movies like a little bit better reviews it's normally like you either have like the story is pretty good or like the actors are pretty good and so we already talked about the story not being all that great but here like you already said the actors aren't all that you know none of the characters really go out i mean we have some decent names and stuff in this movie and we've seen them in a lot of other different things but some of these characters just don't really fit with with the tone and stuff they're going with i mean 
Zach Galifianakis's character is a little uh, uh, a little weird to be put on this. I it's, mean, you know what his character's name is? Weird Wally. <laughs> weird Wally. So, I mean, it fits. He definitely is Weird Wally, but his character doesn't really seem to fit, you know, with with the rest of the ship or with the rest of the movie. I will give general praise to Bruce Greenwood's character portrayal, though. I think he does a very good job. He's probably the, the standout of the cast, which I guess isn't too surprising. He's probably the the most well-known actor in this film, honestly, as far as character actors go. You can see he, his character's conflicted from the start and that there's a little bit of something weird going on. He does a very good job of having this kind of dual personality set, but the rest of the characters didn't work, especially, unfortunately, the the female character in this, who's just one of the rescued um, characters. She was there just because she was a woman, you know, like, oh, we're going to have a woman on a sub and that's going to be, you know, cause friction between the crew because blah, blah, blah. But then she's not there for any other reason other than she's a woman. Well, what's the point of that? That's another thing, too. They make a big deal that at the beginning of the film, like we spent a big lot of time of like going through the whole ship, like, hey, we got a woman on board. Hey, we got a woman on board. Three limeys, one's a female. Hey. And I was a little worried that that was going to be like the over dominating thing in this movie throughout that, you know, like every situation was going to be approached like, oh, man, we got a woman on the ship or like that's where like the tension and stuff was going to come from. And I'm glad that's not the case in this film. I'm, I mean, I guess if there's, you know, that's a positive, I guess, I have on this movie. A, a fear I had early, like, oh, please don't make this be the main part of the movie. Please don't make this. I was glad it wasn't. You know, the thing is, what's really weird is, like, you get this potential feeling that she is maybe, I don't want to say spiritual or, or, or psychic or anything, but things happen around her. But I don't know if that was the intention or not. I don't know, like, the writing in this is, is also subpar. I don't understand why her character is important other than she just, she just is there. It's almost like they're trying to add more mystery, like, to her and the other two people they pick up. Because at first we're kind of like, well, are they causing all this problem? You know, all the suspicion is supposed to be put on them. And then, you know, you realize, like, oh, no, this supernatural stuff is happening on the ship. I've got to go on a little bit on that kind of like supernatural and different elements we have to kind of talk about, you know, the special effects that we have in the CGI. The main ones that we have is we have like the face, you know, they'll appear in the ship sometimes, which I guess that's what our scary elements are supposed to be. This, this ghost face appearing in different places of the ship. And then, you know, the ship like speaking or whatever that didn't really work too much for me, but really the CGI element that really stood out that I would say this is, to me, when I say, hey, it, this feels like early 2000s or a sci-fi one, is when they're outside and you have all, like, the manta rays and stuff flowing by them. I'm like, yeah, that's some uh, some big-time CGI going on there. So the supernatural elements of this are really disappointing for someone who actually enjoys horror movies. The ghost of the ship's captain, who was murdered, and he just kind of shows up in reflections or in or, or in the metal or whatever and you you just think well okay he's not really doing anything he's just showing his like ghostly apparition to people and then those people just freak out and i mean like freak out seriously they don't stop to be like well wait did i just see that did i did i just see what i think i saw no they see this ghost reflection or or whatever apparition showing up and they run to the other side of the sub and eject themselves out into the ocean trying to get away and i'm like well that wasn't set up that thing is that's probably like the best slash worst death in the whole film or whatever if you're really going for kind of like those you know kind of like campy you know thriller horror film deaths or whatever that's probably the best one we have in this film well at least when they're trying to fix the sub and they're in the double hull that guy's in a precarious situation when the ghost shows himself so he can be shocked and like slip and and you know actually fall down and 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 die i can i can get behind that i'm like okay he was he was actually in a very interesting situation that led to his death where the captain was like oh i can take advantage captain's ghost sorry i gotta be more clear where the captain's ghost was like i can take advantage of this situation he's put himself in but the other the other guys that he shows himself to just doesn't make it's just like he's just showing himself, not doing anything. But apparently he can 
because he directs the entire sub back to where they sunk that, you know, the miscellaneous ship, which ends up being the same ship where they picked up the survivors from because they accidentally sunk a rescue ship, a Red Cross ship. He can take action, or can he not? Me, generally for this film, if the big selling point is like seeing the USS Silversides, I would just recommend that people actually go to Muskegon, Michigan and check it out for themselves then actually see it this film or whatever. But I guess if you're, you know, you want a horror film with maybe like a little bit of World War II or whatever sprinkled in or whatever, I guess, you know, check it out. I don't know. <laughs> I would say don't check it out. Go watch 2002's Ghost Ship, like I already mentioned. It's way better, and we should just do a review of that. And since this was a recommendation to us, my recommendation back to the person who recommended it to us is please go watch that instead. <laughs> Randall and I want to know what you guys think of below let us know in the comments below or if you have another ghost ship one let us know what your favorite ghost ship horror slash thriller film is we have a Facebook page be sure to check out our Facebook page we'll always post a day before our videos come out to let you know the topic of our next video our videos come out every Monday and Thursday for now I'm Matt here in Michigan have a good day. And I'm Randall here in Texas. I'll see everyone next time. Next time on No Market Media. Please consider checking out some of our other videos.